The Student Conservation Association, or SCA abbreviated, is America's oldest and largest youth conversation organization. The SCA places participants in fisheries and wildlife management, environmental education, backcountry trail con construction, community engagement, and more from Alaska to Puerto Rico. With us to talk about how you can get involved are Jennifer Huckabone, who leads nationwide recruiting, and Arnold Palamo, the SEA program manager who works in the Bay Area. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi there, and thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Jennifer Huckabone, she, her pronouns, and I'm the recruiting officer with the Con uh, Student Conservation Association. Um, please meet my colleague. Hi, my name is Arnold Palomo. I use he, him pronouns. I am coming in to you from Maloney Territory, also known as Oakland, California. So um, I just want to start by telling you a little bit about um, SDA and how we all got started. Um, and that is with Liz Putnam. She decided that she was seeing um, our national parks were being loved to death. And she thought that a group of young people would be able to help with that. And so she uh, modeled the first conservation group to work in the Grand Tetons in the Olympic National Park in 1957. Um, and she modeled that after the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Civilian Conservation Corps. So fast forward to 60 years um, and you now have SCA as it is. Um, we are co-powering youth and young adults from Puerto Rico to Anchorage, Alaska, and everywhere in between. Um, they're gaining hands-on experience protecting and restoring national parks, cultural landmarks, and revitalizing urban community green spaces. Um, Arnold is going to talk to you about our high school programs, but I'm going to talk to you for a second about our um, internship opportunities that are for young adults 18 and plus. And they are we have lots of opportunities. Um, there are two main ones though. One is for internships where you'd be working with maybe one other SCA member. Um, you'd be working um, at the national park site, maybe with US forests or fish and wildlife. Um, you'd be working on, you could be doing a sea turtle counting. Um, you could be helping um, with education and interpretation for various uh, memorial sites and in different parks. Um, the other opportunity that we have is working with a core team. So it'd be six to eight um, young adults working together. Um, they could be doing trail maintenance, rest restoration projects, fuels reductions to help fight forest fires. Um, you'd be camping together. Um, so those are two opportunities uh, that you could get to get with uh, SCA if you are over the age of 18. Um, either opportunity that you pick, um, our programs are paid. They offer housing, they have a travel allowance, and you can receive an AmeriCorps Education Award at the end of the program that you can use to pay for further education or pay back your student loans. And I'll let Arnold uh, share more. So as Jennifer had mentioned, I am a community manager for our Bay Area programs. More importantly, I oversee community programs um, across the West Coast, and that ranges from Seattle down to any opportunities that we have in Southern California have it be dependent upon partner needs um, and community needs. And so the opportunities that we have right now that are live, that are ready to go, that are asking for you to come in and get involved are generally around the Bay Area. So if you are looking into something, you know, in a way to get connected to the Bay Area or some of the national parks in the northern end of the state, um, I'm your person to talk to. So. Throughout the summer and school year, we are running programs in Oakland, in the Great East Bay, San Francisco, Vallejo, California, um, the Peninsula, Yosemite National Park, and the Tahoe Regional Area as well. Um, and some of the folks that we're partnering with are some of the, you know, the heavy hitters of the area. And so that's East Bay Regional Parks, you know, district, and they are a parks district that is spanning over three counties over here in the Bay Area. Uh, the National Park Service, you know, we have a great partnership with them here in the Bay, have that be, you know, from Alcatraz to Yosemite National Park. The Mid Peninsula Regional Open Space District is a organization, a no private nonprofit that oversees um, land spanning three to four counties on the peninsula end of the Bay Area. Uh, Friends of Sasso Creek is also connected to the city of Oakland, which we partner with when it comes to some of our tree planting services. 
uh, the U.S. Forest Service with essentially filling all that space right in between. Uh, the Greater Vallejo Recreation District, again, uh, enabling us to be able to provide community services and environmental services to the Greater Vallejo area. Um, Solano County is also where Vallejo sits, and so we're able to tap into the Resource Conservation District um, and the surrounding area. So each one of these hub cities are really just spanning outward from it, as well as the California State Parks. With the California State Parks, we have a great partnership and we're embark you know, two years into a 10 year partnership with them where, you know, we're asking high school students to come out to these parks and beautify some of these trails that have been loved to death, as Jen had mentioned, as well as being overgrown. So our summer programs are typically six weeks. You know, we really do tailor them to fit around folks' school schedules, you know, so trying to start, you know, roughly around that July 4th week and running through about mid-August. Um, this is a traditional Monday through Friday schedule where you're going home at the end of every day. Again, these are tied to urban hubs, have it be the Bay Area, have it be Southern California, um, if we have a partner who's in need. And these are working a traditional Monday through Friday, eight to four schedule. Um, and that's hands-on work, building and maintaining trails, doing trail corridor clearing. It could also range from anything from working in community gardens to GIS mapping the trail system in your area. Next slide, please. And so our school year opportunities also look a little bit different and they're able to accommodate your school schedule. The school year program usually focuses on longer term school year programs, which um, during the weekends. So we go out maybe one to two weekends a month doing conservation work, tying that into our environmental education. And probably the, the happiest piece of it is getting outside and camping with a crew of folks you know, brush, brushing off those, you know, those boots and sleeping bags that you got sitting around just waiting to get outside um, and getting some hands-on work involved, you know. So why should you get involved? I mean, it's really, really simple. Like, you know, our base of our work is just working for the earth in any capacity that might look like. A conservationist looks a whole lot different these days. And so it could any, be anything from, you know, maintaining a community garden to, restoring a highly trafficked trail. And again, these this opportunity or any of these opportunities in the organization are, you know, we're able to plug in with all those partners that I mentioned. So you are rubbing shoulders and working alongside park rangers, you know, land management officials and be, you know, working along them to foster a relationship to hopefully just take you to the next step in your green career. And so the way to apply is really, really simple. Our website is extremely user-friendly and where you would just go ahead and sign up and get yourself a profile in our system. And you can apply to as many positions as you can once you're in. But if you wanna get involved with our community programs and our high school age programs, a big piece of that is making sure that you are emailing me. So I'm hoping to get a list of folks um, who are interested and I would be following up with you individually. I would be contacting you and walking you through the process, finding out what the perfect program is for you. If it's not here in state, it might be out of state, but it's still getting you outside, getting you working, getting you paid and getting you an experience that's very memorable. Awesome. Arnold and Jennifer, thank you so much for that. Just incredibly like obviously passionate presentation. Um, I think it really seeped through the screen, but um, we're kind of all curious, uh, kind of what got you guys into conservation and um, what drew you guys to SCA? Absolutely, I could start there. I love being outside. I came from working in summer camps and after school programs and, you know, somebody who was connected to the SCA, who I worked with in a city government in the city of Gilroy where I was born and raised, um, said, hey, I see that you really love to take folks outside. There's a 60-year-old organization that you do not know about. You need to get plugged in. So I applied for a crew leader position, and um, I fell in love. You know, there is the environmental conservation piece is just a great platform to build a lot of community. And again, this network being so huge, it is really, really well known across the country. So if you join SCA, there's no doubt that somebody in your city, somebody's parents has done it before. 
Jennifer, um, we open the question to you as well. Sure. Mine's a little bit different. I spent about 12 years in the staffing industry um, and placing recent college graduates into uh, various office jobs. And so when this opportunity came around, I thought it would be a great opportunity to, to match my uh, years of experience in working with youth um, and placing them in positions and also being able to give back. And I would say uh, probably my favorite thing is that when we all get together for staff meetings, they're very different than the corporate environment has been. There's a mm -hmm. lot of, uh, of fun games that we play often. That's so nice. Um, and, and I feel like that's such an kind of inspirational story for students who are hoping to get involved. Um, what roles do high school students typically play within SCA? And are there any leadership roles for students? Absolutely. Um, so our high school age students are usually filling the roles of our crew members. And so these are the folks on the ground. This is the face of the organization when it comes to somebody walking down a trail and you see a group of folks with hard hats and blue shirts on. You're like, what is going on here? Um, these are these are our students. These are our members. These are the soul of the organization. And these are the, the roles where, you know, it is that stepping stone from there. You're going to jump into an apprentice crew leader position. And that is where you're starting to get that back end look of like, where is it that you want to head within the organization or within the green career panel like um, spectrum? Awesome. Um, you both mentioned a kind of things that you really like about SCA. Um, for Jennifer, it was, you know, the kind of anti-corporate environment or not super corporate-y. Um, for Arnold, you just love being outdoors. Um, we're, we're kind of curious, what's your favorite thing about SCA if it's any different from one of those two aspects? I would love to go first. Um, it comes down to the folks that you're working with. Again, this attracts, you know, a specific kind of person who has that extra kind of spark that you see. And you can only see once you see how they connect with nature. Um, it's pretty exciting to see how motivated people could get when it comes to just being able to get outside. Mm -hmm. It could be anything from, you know, it being inaccessible to just the drive and fluidness, like in the fluidity and just you can see one can be their true self outside. And the SCA has just allowed you to be yourself while being able to build and giving you opportunities within, you know, again, city, state, national organizations. Um, you know, they guide you along the process and it's kind of the reason why I've stayed here for so long. And it's because the organization has supported me through my growth. Yeah, I would say um, the opportunity to see th things that I haven't seen before. Within the first three months of starting at SCA, I got to go to Alaska um, and I got to go to the Arctic Circle in Utviadvik. Um, and it was just a really incredible experience um, and a real eye-opening experience as to as a recruiter to see where I'm placing people and what they get to do. Um, and then also just the people that I work with like Arnold are very passionate about what they do and it makes um, going to work when we went to work every day, <laughs> uh, very enjoyable. <laughs> Definitely. Um, obviously you guys work on a ton of cool projects, but in your opinion, um, what is the coolest project that you have worked on so far? Um, for me, it's, it always has come down to building stairs. It might sound like, you're just building a stair set, but most of the time it's down to a pretty location and it could connect to something as core as accessing the inaccessible. You see folks be extremely excited about this. I mean, I'm pumped on just showing my mom, like, check out this stair that I made. <laughs> you know, it doesn't say a lot, but once she sees where we're heading, have that be a beautiful beach, you know, that connection kind of solidifies a little bit stronger of like why I love it so much. Um, and for me, you know, in recruiting, I get to uh, place people in lots of different roles. Um, I think that the the most interesting ones are probably our fire programs that we have, um, where people are um, getting certifications and going to attempt to work with hot shots. Um, and just the fact that they get to get in there and have that experience at such, um, you know, these are 18 and over positions I'm talking about specifically, but at that level, um, those are always interesting. And then the other affinity groups that we have. So um, we have programs that are geared specifically to individuals that are looking to go into conservation um, for Black indigenous people of color um, and and kind of move them into, you know, they get to experience this opportunity as well. So those are great opportunities that I really, I really like working on. 
Awesome. Uh, another question that's been coming in the chat is a lot of the students attending this conference are from uh, Southern California. And so they were wondering how they can get involved as well, or if they can. Absolutely. Um, you know, and it's the same way it was in any other part of the state. Um, it's really just being that squeaky wheel. Like I said, the SEA is an entire, there's a very, very, has a giant network of alum. And I could almost guarantee you that somebody in these cities has worked or has worked alongside an SCA member. So this is where we're looking to you. Gen Z, the change makers, <laughs> get, get those folks asking for an SCA program and have that be, you know, someone is, you know, somebody like a maintenance worker, that like, you know, I see that we want to plug in some folks and they'll probably say, you know what, I could absolutely use a whole bunch of help here. Where do I start? It's like, just start asking for an SCA program. This is where those city officials start contacting us and contacting us and saying, "Hey, how can we plug you in down here?" And say, "You know what? We got the we got the recipe. We got the model." And then I come, I find y'all, I plug you in, and get you out there on the trail, working, and enjoying the outdoors. Awesome. Well, we have a ton of questions still, but yeah. unfortunately that's all the time that we have for today for um, kind of questions. Um, but it's been such an honor to have you all um, to, to come speak with us and to pitch SCA. So thank you all so much. And we'll be following up with you guys after this conference as well. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so have a good day.